So if you've been watching the channel for any length of time, you may remember that we built a chicken coop here about six months ago. So because now we are in the chicken business, all moved in, there's a few things on my mind that I've thought of and in a couple cases that I've learned about chickens that are somewhere between annoying and interesting. The first of those is that chickens live their lives way down near the bottom of the food chain. Chickens are prey, right? Everybody is down for a chicken dinner. And even though, you know, I went to a fairly, fairly good amount of effort to put up a secure chicken pen, I'm not deceived. I know that sooner or later, somebody who's hungry and has teeth is gonna find their way into that chicken coop and will probably kill every one of them. Because whether it's a raccoon or a dog or a, a weasel or you know whatever it is, when they get into a chicken coop late at night, the party gets going and they're just not inclined to stop as long as there's something flying and running around. And the evidence I have to support that is something that happened, wow, I think, I think that Amanda was five and Nate was probably four, three and a half or four, and it was in Wyoming. We were living in Powell, Wyoming, and we have ever since referred to this as the Great Christmas Day Chicken Massacre. We had 50 fat Rhode Island hens, and uh, we had three roosters, but that's another story, which you may get here in a minute. But I went out before Christmas morning. The kids weren't up yet, and it was just a classic little house on the prairie moment. I went out to feed the animals, chickens, and we had a horse, and we had goats, and I stepped out of the door, and I saw what turned out to be a line of 50 dead hens stretched from inside the chicken coop, which is where most of them were, across the driveway and clear out to the county road where some of them had gotten to before a neighbor dog had caught them. And they were dead and they were frozen to the ground and it was uh, a grisly sight. And so I remembered that as I was building the coop here for these chickens and the door swings itself shut and it latches and the grandkids have been admonished to close the door and Kelly goes out at night to make sure that everything's locked in, but chickens are prey. And sooner or later, somebody, whether it's the Wadsworth family or someone else is gonna end up eating these girls. The next item is something that I've recently learned that is related to the first item. And that is chickens like to roost as high as they can get from the ground because they know their prey, right? And so that means that you should have their roost higher than the egg boxes. You want them to be sleeping higher than where they lay their eggs because if it's the other way, if the, if the roost is by the ground and the egg boxes, the laying boxes are higher, they'll sleep in the laying boxes because it gives them a sense of security and then they foul their nest and then your eggs are dirty but on the other hand, if the roost for your chickens is higher than the egg boxes, the egg boxes will stay clean. A pecking order is a real thing in a flock of chickens. And if you've got a weak hen or a little hen, we've got a couple banties out there. And now that the other hens are big, they just beat them up. But with a rooster in the flock, there is a leader. There is somebody, somebody who sort of assumes a leadership position and establishes the pecking order. So whatever's happening down line, at least there's not churn and turmoil in the flock about who roosts highest and who has precedence at, in any given instance. So we got these hens as chicks. I mean, they were pretty much a, a springtime little chick and we raised them and more properly, my grandkids, Leo and Cora and Rusty and Annabeth actually, I don't think Cy had any role in that, but my grandkids hand raised those things, especially Leo and Cora. And there is nothing quite like a hand raised chicken. They just consider themselves part of the family. So that's where the hens came from. But the rooster came from Kenny. Do you remember, did you watch our sighting videos, those three, those three young guys that helped us so much? Kenny and Jim and Nathan? Well, Kenny and Nathan have chickens out in Elkton, Oregon. By the way, our rooster's name is Elkton now because Kenny and Nathan caught him for us one night and brought him to work the next day and we brought him home. So Elkton has a new home, but here's what Kenny taught me about roosters. They live in a more rural environment than I do, along the river, pretty rough. And they had two roosters. And Kenny said that those roosters are continually scanning the sky and watching for threats from the air or on the ground. And when they perceive something that seems dangerous to them, they make a particular kind of a clucking, barking chicken noise that somehow alerts the hens and the whole flock pulls into a group and uh, the rooster's on guard. 
Now, I don't know what actually good a guard rooster is, <clears throat> but you remember the great Christmas Day chicken massacre that I just told you about? Well, prior to that, when I got that flock of birds, there were three Rhode Island red roosters, young, with them. And they were pretty protective. They took this guard rooster thing seriously. And one day I sent my beautiful five-year-old daughter, Amanda, out to feed those chickens. And right away I heard her crying. And I hustled in there and here these three roosters had her cornered in the coop and they were beating her up. Well, they didn't realize just how much trouble they were in. But I'll just sort of abbreviate the long bloody story by telling you that just a couple days later, Amanda got to see some... Uh, they got, she got to watch those roosters converted from assets on the farm to assets in the freezer. And she no longer had any fear or hesitance to go into the chicken coop after that. Last thing I learned is that there is a nifty way to water chickens. You don't just have to have a bucket that they drowned in and that they walk in and they poop in. You can use something called a chicken dripper. And it's a way, it's a fitting that attaches to the bottom of a vessel and will drip a little water out when the chicken pecks the little, the little metal piece that hangs down. Didn't take these girls long to figure it out. They go through almost five gallons of water on a hot day. I mean, a lot of it ends up on the ground, but they drink a fair amount of water now that they're in the egg business. And I guess that just sort of falls in with the whole thing about maintenance generally. A chicken requires some maintenance. They've got to be cleaned up after and they've got to be fed and it's a good chore for your kids. But the thing that I did learn is that they are an excellent way to take care of the extra produce out of the garden. It doesn't matter what it is, the chickens like it. If they get into the garden, they will peck my tomatoes and they'll beat up the cucumbers and so we keep them out of the garden. But anything that doesn't make the cut into my kitchen and the stuff that comes out of the kitchen as part of the food processing, processing, if it's not flesh, if it's not the meat of an animal, it goes to the chickens and they love it. Thanks for watching Essential Craftsman and keep up the good work. Hi. Oh, good rust. Good rust. Oh my gosh. Rusty. Rusty, what's the chicken say? What's the dog? Uh. What's the doggy say? Is that the best? Peggy. Hold it. Okay, be very careful. Here you go. Mama, look at that one. There you go, go, go. Rusty, be so nice. I'm not letting you do it. Do you want to pet it?